He is risen. He has risen indeed. Amen. That'll get louder as we go along, I'm sure. Um, we'll start in just a moment. We had a, um, a little malfunction that's being taken care of as we kind of uh, wait just a little bit for that to be repaired. And, and there's a lot of people in the back. We had another malfunction. We're making you little breakfast burritos so that after the service, you can have a little bit of breakfast. And they had a little mal So a lot of people who want to be in the service are helping to roll those little burritos for you. So they said, could you just not start so fast? I said, well, we generally don't anyway. But we'll, um, but we'll try to be sensitive to the fact that there's some people rolling in a little bit on the late side. So... That said, we're going to worship the risen Christ today. And we invite you to, to worship with all of your heart. And I should qualify. We say worship as though worship is singing. Worship is a life given in surrender to Christ in all that we do. But we're going to worship in song. And we hope that you can find it in your heart to, to give your voice away to the resurrected Jesus this morning. Uh, and we had a good Friday service. By, by the way, was anybody here for a sunrise service? Okay, that's good because it was canceled because of the rain. And, and, and it was right because it was raining at that time. So we did good to do that. Uh, we had a good Friday service on Friday, of course. And, and we didn't do a song that uh, today a couple, few people have actually said, why didn't you do the song? And they said, we'll... We'll kick you out of the church if you don't do it and that whole thing. And so we're going to do a little portion of the song as kind of uh, uh, not the, the regular body of our service this morning, but kind of it'll kind of start, kind of prep our start for the service. So we'll, we'll do that now. And because we didn't practice, it's going to be Tom and I and, and my uh, lovely uh, daughter over here on my, on my left. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross with the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I Cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for. of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary so I'll cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last I lay cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died 
to pardon and sanctify me. Oh, I cherish the old rugged cross to my troll. At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday, someday for a crown cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear then you'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share one more time so I cherish the old rugged cross To my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday Please rise.
not a command to stand, but when we do ask you to stand, we're, that's great. But if you can't stand or it's too long, feel free to sit down as well. Pastor Jason. You can sit down. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. 
He is risen. Praise God. Oh, welcome to the Easter service at CCF. We're so happy you're here. And besides knowing it was Easter, God has called you here. He put it in your mind, he put it in your heart, and you showed up. Thank you. We're so glad to have you. Our pastor will talk a little bit about this glorious day, but I wanted to remind us a little bit. You know, Jesus' miracles and resurrection, you know, over the time, it seemed like they progressively got stronger and more powerful and pointing towards what he was going to do and raise himself from the dead to save us from our sins. And one of the last uh, miracles that he did was, was raising Lazarus from the dead. And what an amazing thing that was. But it's temporary. And not to put a damper on those of us who are suffering and ask for miracles and we want recovery and we want health, but it's temporary, like our pastor reminds us. And just like Lazarus' resurrection, it was temporary. He would die again. Yeah. And how great that is, and how amazing and spectacular that was for him, for his family, and how joyous the occasion was. He eventually died. But the resurrection that we're talking about this morning, it is not like the resurrection of Lazarus. Amen. It is not being resurrected to be an angel, to be a spirit. God will resurrect us in a new body, and we will see him. And we will see him as he is, and we will be like him. And so out of all the joy that we can have, and even the suffering, and praise God for miracles and healings. But he does not want to end with the healing. He wants to end with a change, with a transformation. He wants to give you a new body that's real, that will be with him. And so this morning, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, remember, he, did not, he was not resurrected to a body that would die again. He was changed, and he sits at the right hand of the Father. And so this morning, let's remember that. And let's not desire the temporary resurrections of Lazarus, but the permanent, eternal resurrection of the body that only comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray with me. Lord, this morning, there's only one thing to do, Father. There's only one thing to pray for, and that's to glorify you, Lord. Lord, change our hearts and our minds. Remind us, Lord, that you have eternal plans for us, Father, not temporary. And your son didn't come to just give us a healing, Lord. He came to give us power and to be transformed and changed that we might live with you forever in heaven, Father. And how marvelous that is and how uncomprehensible for us, Lord. Help us this morning to get a glimpse of it, Lord. And thank you so much for the joy and the hope that is found in your son, Lord, that you loved us so much. And he did die and he did raise, Lord. There's no denying that. Help us to praise you in that capacity this morning, Father. Bless us as we raise our voices to you and bless you, Lord, and bless you, Jesus, for the miracle, the amazing transformation that you overcame. You beat our death foe, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. We praise you. We give you glory. In the name of your Son, who we worship this morning, amen. amen. Please rise to your feet. Oh, shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber and he's come to take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. Let's do that again. Oh, shame. Is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber, and he comes to take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer, lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power with my freedom song. Is Down. 
Is that true for you? Yeah. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to you. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to you. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to you. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking to you.
called my name Thought it was too far gone Far gone away For everything I've done wrong Done wrong Yeah, I'm the one who dug this grave Dug this grave But you called my name You called my name sin has broken that and so we find ourselves worshiping crazy things ourselves somebody else some other thing but we're created to worship Jesus so what a wonder it is when we come to know Jesus to find a way to now express what's all along been in our hearts to worship now we worship him Christ we don't let the rocks do it and, and though they may or creation do it though it may but we're called to worship may all creation worship Jesus but may you and I worship Jesus come let us sing to the Lord come let us bow down before him he's back
You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore.
The sun will be turned to darkness And the moon will be turned to blood Before that great day comes To meet the resurrected one There'll be wonders in the skies And dreams in old men's eyes And there'll be sons and daughters Speaking of things they cannot hide Son, my son, my very own son Celebrate my son Son, my son, my very own son Celebrate my soul Highly and exalted one Oh, knees will bow and tongues confess All those alive and all those dead He will give you a sure thing Sure and holy blessing of David Dust and ashes He will not be Resurrection, resurrection Resurrection is what you'll see Son, my son, my very old son Celebrate my son Son, my son, my very old son Celebrate my son Son, my son, my very old son Celebrate my son Son, my son, my very old son Celebrate my soul Son, my son, my very old son, celebrate my son. Son, my son, my very old son, celebrate my son. Son, my son, son, my son, my very old son, celebrate my son. Son, my son, my very old son, celebrate my son. I know you've been standing a long time. Please take a seat. With that, we'll have Pastor Ernie come up with a few announcements. You know when those things are occurring, you can help out as well. Also, uh, coming up, uh, in fact, next week we'll give you some specifics, but we have care groups. Uh, care groups are where you probably grow the most uh, you hear a sermon and you don't get to talk back. Maybe in your head you do. Some of you talk back to me afterwards. But uh, you learn more when you get to dialogue. And in care groups, you have more of that going on. So you really are going to learn at a greater degree if you join a care group. So we invite you to be part of that. And again, next week, we'll give you some specifics about that. We always look for leaders. or And again, you don't have to be a Bible teacher. In fact, the care groups don't provide for Bible teachers per se, but for hosts who have it in their homes. And then together you'll discuss the things that you'll be going through. So that's a heads up to you. Again, as has already been said uh, uh, through Pastor Jason and also through Ernie, uh, thanks for being here. We're glad that you're here. We trust that God will speak to you in the unique way that he does through flawed people like me. But God is faithful his word is faithful, and it is not flawed. So uh, we'll get to that in just one moment. But let's take a moment and pray. Uh, Jesus, thank you for this time together and for your love for us and for somehow, Lord, in, your, in, in the mystery of heaven's throne room, that somehow you put it in us that we might understand 
what is far beyond our understanding. That you love us and that you died for us and you called us your own. So Father, thank you that we belong to you. We love you and pray, Lord, that if anybody here doesn't know you, that they would. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You know, I mentioned uh, uh, last week and periodically I'll, I'll mention the reality that, that God is far beyond us and the Bible is clear to tell us that His ways are our ways and His thoughts on our thoughts. But we have the Word of God so that we can, again, get to know God and, and allow our thoughts to be His thoughts and to work at having our thoughts be His thoughts. But God is always beyond us and God is not a human and we are not God. But we are called to be like Him. In fact, that's God's will for your life. That you would become like Him. That's why we've quoted many times here the passage that says, and all things work together for good for those that love Jesus, for those that are called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He predestined to be conformed into the image of His Son. That He wants to make you like Jesus. And so, the way that happens is that the resurrection becomes real in your life because without the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ your faith is dead and it has no power or meaning the Bible is very clear to tell us that we must hold to the reality that Jesus rose from the dead in flesh and bone he rose from the dead they touched him he ate with them and all the apostles spent time with him and over 500 saw him at once And during the writing of those very words I've just spoken, most of those people were still alive. Though some had been already, had gone to heaven, most were still alive. And all those who walked with Jesus gave their lives up in martyrdom because they believed Jesus, because they saw the resurrected Christ. Well, I'm ahead of myself but I just want you to know that Jesus really did rise from the dead and that when you receive this Christ, the risen Lord, that you too, in a unique way, will rise from the dead. Not just in the future to come, but as you live each day out. You see, we want to learn to walk in a way that we're reflecting the risen Christ so that we're walking in a way that is really in the power of the risen Lord. In fact, the Bible tells us that the same spirit who rose Jesus from the dead is the same spirit who indwells you. Now our job is to learn to surrender and to obey the spirit of Christ that's within us. So I hope that some of what we say this morning or some of what I say helps you grab a better hold of that reality and that you can indeed grow in your knowledge of Jesus and walk in the wonder of the power of his power inside of you. Let's talk for a moment about the bad news. The word gospel means good news. But there's only good news if there's bad news. news. (laughs) There's got to be something that says, I need good news. The Bible's very clear about that, but you're very clear about it. It doesn't take long to live to realize that the world is full of bad news. And all of us, if we've lived long enough, the bad news has come our way. As I've said many times, working as a chaplain for Ontario Police Department, there came a time that every time I heard the phone ring, I thought it was somebody telling me that somebody in my family had died or was hurt or was in an accident because I went through a period of a number of months where I was being called regularly on horrific scenes and so I had this thing in me that was like so sensitized to that reality that I just was expecting bad news all the time in fact when I when my phone would ring and it'd say Ontario Police Department I didn't want to answer it because I knew it was bad news and I had taken on the mantle to say I'm going to go and I'm going to Stand, sit, lie, be with somebody who's going to get bad news. And sometimes I was giving the bad news. So I had to decide 
Am I willing to enter into somebody's bad news? Now, they didn't tell me about that when they first asked me to be a chaplain. I thought I'd get a nice uniform and, I could, and people would salute me. I had one of those funny blue hats. I still have it. I should wear it some Sunday just so you can salute me. And, and so I, I thought I'm going to have that thing. And then, you know, they, they used me a lot in city functions to come and give, in, you know, pretty little invocations. But that wasn't the job. The job was to go and enter into somebody's grief. I thought, I don't know, Lord, I, I'm not sure I want to do that. But I've been doing it for some 28 years now. But that's life. Life is full of grief. Yeah. If, if it hasn't touched you yet, I'm sorry, but it's going to. Because we live in a world where death is. I remember many times in silence thinking, Lord Jesus, raise this baby from the dead. Come on, Lord, I know you can do it. This is in my head. I know you can do it. Do it, God, please do it. I don't want to say you're going to do it because what if you don't? Then I look like an idiot and I make you look like an idiot. I only want to say it if you're going to do it, Lord. Are you going to raise this baby from the dead? No. I'm not, son. I never got, yes, say it. (laughs) Never. I always got a, no, son. I'm not raising them from the dead. But one day they will raise Right now, they'll be with me in heaven, but one day they will raise. Somebody asked me once, well, how old will will babies be in heaven? How old will old people be in heaven? Will they go to heaven and now they're going to be forever old in heaven? That's a mystery. I don't know. But some have said that, no, you'll be 33 when you're in heaven because that's the peak of your life and you'll be at the peak forever. Now, I don't know about that. Jesus was 33 when he passed. So maybe we'll all be 33. Our old parents who have gone before us, our little precious babies who have gone before us. Then maybe we'll all meet and we'll all be the same age. Those are mysteries, aren't they? But here's the reality. We will all rise from the dead because Jesus rose from the dead. So that though I can go and though you've said before, oh God, let me see a resurrection right here, right now. How many times have you said or have I said when there's a casket behind me and I'm preaching, oh God, if they raise from the dead, I'm with you on this one. I could just hear people now, ah, running out of the church, but, but you're hoping that there'll be a resurrection. Well, I don't think I'll ever see one because I just don't think God is working that way. And by the way, in third world countries, I I hear that that stuff is happening. But I'm not there. So I can only say that from my perspective, my vantage point, that God tells me, no, but I've risen from the dead so that you all will rise on that day. Now let me go back just a little bit. Death is the absence of life. I'm going to cut this way down, by the way, because... We sing more on Resurrection Sunday, and, uh, and I have a lot of pages here, so I'm going to trim it down for you, but let me just say in a nutshell that, that death is the absence of life. Death is separation fundamentally from God. That's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2.1, you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Because we're cut off from the life force because we're born in sin. So from the beginning, we're cut off from that life. We're born in sin. Now I do believe certainly that, that, that there's a certain age of accountability, but until then, we're, we're, we're still kind of working through what it means to walk in a way where we know something's wrong. It's all around us. We can look in the mirror and go, something's wrong. Something's terribly wrong in this world and in my life. And then then eventually we kind of realize that something's missing. And it's that life that only Jesus can bring. 
In the Old Testament, by the way, when it speaks about death, it speaks about Sheol. Sheol is a word also sometimes intermixed with the word Hades. But Jesus clarifies what Sheol is, that term where the, where the dead go to, especially in the Old Testament. Jesus clarifies it in Luke 16, 9 through, 19 through 31. And we'll read that to get a sense of the idea of death as it was before Jesus rose from the dead. So as you know ahead, what's going to happen? Jesus will rise from the dead. We know that in advance. So keep that in the back of your head because we'll get to that in just a minute as to how it makes sense to this. Now let me read to you this portion of the scriptures. There was a rich man who was, who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table even the dogs came and licked his sores. Now hold on for just a moment but we can find that in the Bible parables don't give names of the people. This is a story that Jesus is picking out to be a true story. He's telling us something about what's really happened. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades. What's another word for Hades? Yeah, what's another word? Sheol. Sheol. Sheol is the Hebrew word. Hades is the Greek word. But without getting into that, Jesus is going to clarify something to us. In Hades where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. So without getting to all the specifics of this passage, because that's not the point, Jesus does clarify this, that in the afterlife, there is no mending of the two places where people go. The Bible is not saying that people who had a good life here go to hell, people who had a bad life here go to heaven. That's not the point here. He's just saying that in this particular place, here's where this man was, and here's where this man was. And they cannot, in the afterlife, come back or cross the bridge so that they're in the other place that they're not. Are you clear with that? Is that a mm mm-hmm? Got it? Okay. He answered, this is the man who's in torment answers. Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. So they're able to communicate. In this story, there's communication, but they can't go over to the other side. Abraham replies to him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. Jesus says, I've given my word. Here's who it's coming through. They need to pay attention to the prophets I'm sending them. Another way to say it is that they need need to listen to the pastors and the preachers that God has sent the evangelists that God has sent, the apostles that God has sent. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Uh, It's an interesting line. Jesus 
or rather uh, Abraham replies in this story, he said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Important little passage there. Because since the resurrection of Jesus, from the very beginning, there was corruption. Right away, the leading Jews who put him on the cross said, you know, they're going to steal the body. So we want to make sure they don't steal the body because this guy's been trouble since he's been born. If they steal the body and they believe he's resurrected from the dead, it'll be worse. His life will be worse for us. So they said, well, then take the guard and go seal the tomb and set up the guards. And this is the guard, really it means the guard that would be taken with probably 16 men because they were rotating how they did that. So without getting, without getting into how they would secure a tomb or whatever it is that they're taking care of, there was probably 16 soldiers. And so let me read on here. They wouldn't even believe if someone rises from the dead. Already there was corruption. They didn't want anybody to believe that Jesus would rise from the dead. Of course, they didn't believe that. They thought they'll just steal the body. So, so when Jesus dies on the cross, let me cut through some things. When Jesus dies on the cross, what does he do in those days of darkness when he's not resurrected from the grave. Well, the Bible tells us in various places that he descended. What does that mean? But that he gave proclamation to those who were waiting for the Messiah. So all those in Abraham's bosom, all those who are on Abraham's side are freed to go to paradise where Jesus would be when he went back to be with the Father. That's why he says to the, to the thief on the cross who receives Jesus, he didn't say to him, today you are going to Sheol. He false witnesses about God if he didn't rise from the dead. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not will be reunited with their bodies And we'll be caught up with the Lord in the air. And then there'll be another day that'll come where Christ's feet will hit the ground and all things will be made right that are wronged. And all ashes will be turned to beauty. And there'll be a cataclysmic change then. But the next thing we await is what we call the rapture. Where the dead are caught up And then we, the church that remain, will be caught up with the Lord in the air. That word rapture comes from a Latin word, raptura, that means to be caught up. It's a biblical term that speaks of this time when the church will be caught up with the Lord in the air. Now here's the thing. If Jesus rose from the dead, if he really rose from the dead, then I'm going to call on you to live like it. To live like that's true by faith in what's happened. Because something has awakened in you. You've been made from dead to life. Now, what was once a mystery to you has become real to you. That Christ has risen and Christ lives. And now the darkness is no longer dark. Now you've been lit up in your heart, in your soul of souls, there's been an illumination by the Holy Spirit where now you have a brightness to realize who you are and who God is. The light has been turned on for those who receive Christ. In fact, it's kind of turned on before we make the commitment because somehow or another, in God's mystery and love, He's calling us to Himself. And we only hear that as dead people because God allows us to hear it. 
So here's kind of what salvation looks like for just a moment. We are here on earth, and this room is earth. And we're all born, and we're all born in sin, broken, broken from each other, broken from God. And, and we want to worship, and so we worship rocks and things and each other, and, and men worship women, and women worship money that the men make, and, and all the stuff that we do, and we kind of do that whole thing, but something's missing, there's a brokenness here. But life goes on, and then, and then somebody looks up there, look, see where it says exit? You can go and look, it says exit. <laughs> But let's just say it didn't say exit. It just says this. Here's the words. Whosoever will, come. We hear the call of God, and and it's kind of like, whosoever will, come. Come to me, God says. What you're really looking for in this broken world is a wholeness that only I can give. It's a fullness only I can restore It's a darkness that I can only bring light to. Whosoever will come. And we go, by faith, we go, yes. That sounds right. That's right. That's right. And something's tugging at our hearts. Now I'm simplifying the fact that you're hearing the gospel. And the gospel that you hear is saying to you, come. You hear about the resurrected Jesus. And and it's God saying, come. Come. And then we walk through the door. We go, Jesus, I found you. And we turn around and we look on the other side of the door. And it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Now that's the mystery of God. That somehow in God's love, great love, You only became alive because he called you to himself. And we go, whosoever will, I'm coming. And we go, we go, I found God. He goes, no, he called me to be his. And if you're here this morning, I trust he's calling you. That's why you're here. Because he's calling you. And your life is everywhere. I'm going to ask you that if Jesus really did raise from the dead, that your purpose needs to change. Because that is the purpose of life, serving the risen king. For he becomes your king. You're no longer on the throne. When it says, whosoever will come, he's saying, get off your throne, come. And bow at mine. Because he is God. And we're but little creatures. But he loves you. He loves me. And he may be calling you to himself. Whosoever will come. That's the message of the cross. It's the message of the resurrection. That Jesus rose. So you too can have eternal life. Now we're going to close here in a song. And I want to encourage you. To hear the call of God in your life. Wherever you might be. And maybe you just know that something is different. And you've been part of, part of churches somewhere. Or part of this church. And you're going... Something's different in me. I'm alive to something I was never alive to before. There's something real here, but I want to commit to what I know now is the Holy Spirit calling me to Himself. And you can know eternal life. And as Christ was risen from the dead, and so will you. So we live in the blessed hope. So when terrible things happen, or difficult things Things that we don't understand. You know, I don't know where where you are today. There's many of you here, and I don't know where you are, but there's always hurt because we're part of that human predicament. And, And wherever your hurt is, God knows better than anybody and meets you there. And sometimes we're going, God, get rid of this. And, and, and sometimes God does, but sometimes God says, no, there's a process. Because I want something greater in you that can only happen because we go through the work. And God will make you go through the work. Because there's a process by which you are finding what it means to walk with Him. And to know Him. And to walk in the hope and the assurance of the resurrection. Sometimes it's only in those painful times that we learn and that we grow. 
though I hate them, I go, God, take it away. Sometimes I realize, God, here's, I've never thought of, I've never had to pray so much in my life. And here I am because there's a difficult time here. Don't let them be wasted. Know God and know that the worst thing in this life is not the worst thing because Jesus rose from the dead. I know it feels like the worst thing, but it's not the worst thing. The worst thing would be that you didn't know Jesus nor His walking with you through this difficult time in your life. But God loves you. God didn't only die for you. He rose for you to walk in victory in the things that are painful now. May you know Jesus. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. I thank you that there's mystery, things I'll never know, but Lord, I know this. I need you, and I've been hit by life to know that I need you more than anything and all of existence. And without you, I'm nothing. Without you, I have nothing. Without you, there is no hope. Without the resurrection, there is nothing that awaits me, and my life is full of emptiness. But Lord, with you, there is purpose and meaning and value in my life because you've called me to yourself for things that are beyond me. God is calling you. I pray you would give your life to Jesus. Amen. Please rise.